Hello, beautiful people. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Honest Am here, the creator and writer of the Honest Lisa's newsletter, a bi-weekly newsletter gives towards millennials who are truly trying to get their shit together. And I am here for another daily motivational video where we use the tarot to become the alchemists of our lives and to teach us how to become spiritual beings. A little bit about me. I do not just use the tarot. I use gun cusses in the same sentence and I may mispronounce some things. But if it does not stop Charlemagne the God, it will not stop me. Angel number 19, guys, we are in this big, and then 27, we're in a big uh, 19. We are in a transition period. God, what do we need to know about this transition period? How can we anchor down? How can we align ourselves with the energies of the universe? Alive, no room for doubt and confusion. In God name I pray, Ashe. Ooh, I love it. That kind of came right the fuck out. I love that. We love it. <laughs> we like me. Let's see, let me stop. All right, gratitude. Gratitude. Universal love shines through the miracles of your life all around you. So as um, <clears throat> who was that? So as you're going through this, uh, maybe there may be some upheaval going on in your life. Maybe you may feel yourself going through this this transition period. Maybe you can feel like you know. Your new life is coming, but it's not quite like there. Or maybe you're not even there. Maybe you may just be like, I just don't want my life like this no more. Whether you are close to making your dream a reality or you're far away, what's going to get you closer and closer to your goals is gratitude. It may sound corny, but there's actually, and I'm going to go to this deck, there's actually a card in there that says making peace with today will improve your tomorrow. And I just feel like God has been saying so much this week, like your frustration, your trying to figure things out is really the root to all your frustration. If only you just have gratitude and just accept where you are today, everything will be okay, honestly. And then the last message that came out is love. Live your truth. Share the love that is in you. Um, and I mean, that's very simple. I feel like God is saying to get us through this transition period. If you feel like you're going through a transition period, instead of focusing on the love, I mean, instead of focusing on the chaos or the turmoil or the crazy thing that's going on in the world, God is asking you to really just have gratitude for everything that you have in your life. Really try to develop this practice of just uh, angel number 222, two, two, not even just like, of, of being like five things you can be grateful for but really like think about like okay I pray to have such and such things like say for example my dog like I've always wanted to have a dog that was just like super lovable super cuddly I, I and this is not my first dog I had a dog that did not want to be loved and cuddled on but like Cuddy is like literally the perfect dog for me like he's just so in tune with me um like I just love this dog like I, I literally love this dog like he's like my heart in human form I mean in animal form and I think about like damn like I um when I was I, let me take a step back I was about to start doing this project uh for honestly sis and so I was reviewing you know some of my older letters and literally in one of my very first letters to honestly sis I was like and I want a dog desperately like I bet I want a dog really really bad and like Two, not even like a couple of months later, I met Cuddy came into my life and he literally came into my life in the most random way. So I just want you to just get in this habit of thinking about like, damn, like this is a prayer answer. The apartment that I'm living in right now, this is a, a prayer answered. I literally, um, I was, I stayed, I stayed in the same building. I moved down a couple of floors, but I had every intentions on low key. It was like around this time, two years ago. I was going to just call my, I was working through a leasing agent. I was going to tell him I wanted to renew my lease. And mind you, just a month before he told me it wasn't going to be a problem. But then all of a sudden the owner of the unit wanted the unit back. And so I had to like literally find somewhere to live within like a month. And the crazy thing is like it was holiday times. It was December. I was in the middle of a breakup. Like it was just bad, bad timing. Um, and I just remember, I just kept being like, I don't want to move. Like, I just really don't want to move. Like, I love my neighborhood. Like I'm a, you know, able, everybody love my dog. I'm able to walk Cuddy. Like, it's just the perfect neighborhood. I didn't want to move. And then one day I happened to just be downstairs, like on my way to work. Actually, I think I was uh, waiting for my car or something. And I just happened to talk to uh, the valet and I'm just like, damn, like I got to move and I'm really frustrated because I haven't been able to find nothing. And he was like, oh, you know, somebody in here got units, blah, blah, blah. Let me hook you up with him. Was able to sign this lease within a week. Like, and guess how much time I had left on my, for me to move? Two weeks. 
two weeks left to move, and I found somewhere to live to leave with to move within a week. And I and I really feel like it's only because I was just like I don't want to move. Like I love this area so much, and I just like stayed in it. Like you know, I don't know. I just tell you that to say like. And I, and I don't even think it's like me because I didn't want to move because I don't even know how I came up, how I was able to get that. But I say that story to tell you that this is a prayer answered. I'm, I'm sitting in a prayer answer and I'm sure you, if you take a time out to like really sit and think about your life, you're in prayers answered. So have gratitude and make sure that you make decisions in love. Angel number 553. Uh, the last card that came out is free spirit. To be a free spirit is to float without walls, to fly without judgment, and to love without conditions. And I just feel like what God is saying is like, it's just so important for you to have, um, it's not even to just have gratitude, but to just truly love where you are now. Like find something, like everything in your life can't be bad. And honestly, there was a thing in, um, on sex in the city that was like it's always going to be some area in your life that's not going to be going good if you got a really good relationship going on in your housing situation probably don't fucked up if you got a really good job then your love life is fucked up so you know it's like cycles like you have to learn how to take the good with the bad but the way to make it through those cycles and to make it through those transitions is to focus on love <sighs> gratitude and love god clarify this message of gratitude and love why is this so important for us to have gratitude for what we are. Why is it so important for us to move and make decisions in love? Why do you want us to be a free spirit? Allow no room for doubt or confusion. Please, God, give us one card to just wrap this one up. I want to kind of make this a quick message, God. In God's name, I pray. God, I shall. And it's two, but it's okay. I will not try to control the uncontrollable. Um, this is for gratitude. And that's why God is saying like, if you, if, if something is not going the way that you want it to go, right? The thing to do is not to try to control something outside of you because you can't control anything outside of you. All you can control is yourself. And what this card is saying is by you trying to control something else, all you're going to do is just manifest and attract more things to be controlled to you. So that's why I got to say have, have gratitude. And guess what? That's going to just frustrate you. So it's so important for you to just have gratitude. The card I want to focus on is I intend to co-create from my place of positive attraction. That's why God wants you to focus on gratitude and love so that you can co-create from positivity and not negativity. I have a video on this channel that says the law of attraction is working whether you know it or not. And this is why I'm trying to get you to understand that you are, you're, you're attracting things into your reality, whether you're aware of it or not. So in order to attract the things you really want, you want to have gratitude and you want to focus on the good. The individual, um, the individual creators who are coming together must be in a place of positive attraction before they can come together or nothing positive can come out of co-creation. If you are negatively focused and not feeling good, you can only attract others who are in the same state of attraction. So if you are surrounded by people who ain't shit, people who don't, who are not true to themselves, who lie to themselves, how can you expect to have an authentic life? How can you expect to have authentic relationships if you're surrounded around all of that, right? You're only going, your life right now is a reflection of how you feel on the inside. So if you don't like how you, if you don't like how you feel on the inside and if you don't like how your life is going, don't it make you feel better to just focus on better and to try to do things to make you feel better? Like that logically makes sense, right? But spiritually and energetically is doing the same thing. Um, that is why looking for a mate from a place of insecurity or lack or of anything can never bring the mate you really want. But instead brings only the one who amplifies your current lack. Ladies, angel number 922. The reason why you keep getting those ain't shit niggas is because you feel ain't shit down inside. You, you, you don't feel like shit inside. You feel like garbage. You desperate. And so you're accepting any fucking thing that come to you. And so, <laughs> so all the things that are going to come to you are the things that are going to use you. And that's going to amplify that you aren't shit. It's only going to, it's only going to amplify your insecurities, sis. 
to stop being fucking desperate. That's my PSA for today. I can replace false premises with law-based premises. Hello. You up here thinking, oh, all the good men is taken. Also, like, shit, like, like the belief that all rappers are dogs. All athletes ain't shit. Like, you do realize that if you feel that way, but deep down inside, you want a rapper and you want an athlete. When you do attract them, you're going to attract that ain't shit version of them. Come on. Accountability. I'm done. I don't even, even want to have this conversation because I can feel myself getting amps. Like, God is like, it's on you. I, I just, I don't, I don't, I honestly, I feel like I'm not going to do no more video today because everything is like, it's on you. What do you believe is possible for your life? What you believe possible in your life? Because guess what? I told y'all I want to be with a rapper. And my rapper ain't gonna, he ain't gonna fucking dug me out. Okay. I want to be with a Jay-Z type nigga. And he ain't gonna dog me out, boo. <laughs> we not going through that bullshit. He gonna be heel ready and good to go. Okay. I want to deal with somebody that's on my level, that's in my industry, that's doing, the, that's that's going to challenge me and help me grow, that can feed me and cater to me. So I can't be thinking that all niggas that got money ain't shit. <laughs> Ladies, I just feel like, you know, at some point we got to take accountability for how these niggas act out here. That's the part. Nobody want to talk about. <laughs> Nobody want to have that conversation about how women lack of uh, boundaries, how women lack of uh, moral code, ethical integrity. It's really why these niggas is running out here rampant. The reason why these women is so desperate and so like wanting to be with anybody is why these niggas think that they can do whatever the fuck they want to do. Like nobody's going to address that. But y'all go keep doing these men ain't shit, girls ain't shit, instead of realizing we all ain't shit and we all need to work on ourselves so that we can heal ourselves and heal the fucking world. Because this world don't work when just men running it or when just women running it. We only work when we are together because this world works in balance. Okay. Well, I'm going to stop because I feel like I'm going left. <laughs> I feel like I'm getting kind of irritated and I don't know why, but I just, I just feel like some of y'all are so fucking frustrated. You're so mad at God and it's really because you just don't think highly enough of yourself. I said it. God damn it. <laughs> I said it. Do better black women. <laughs> so our men can do better. So our men can be better. Like, I know that we was looking at Spike and being like, what the fuck are you doing with that one movie where women cut the niggas off because they was doing all this gun violence? But women, the power lies in us and what we accept. And I don't know about y'all, but I told y'all earlier this year, uh, I was feeling all in my feelings and I wasn't talking to my ex and I just wanted to have sex and... I was going to mess with a guy, but he lived with another woman. And I said to myself, I'm not going to, I don't care how you, how you say your relationship is doing. If you living with that woman, your dick is hers. You, 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 you're with that woman. And in my eyes, that's not for me because I would never want to, I would never want that to happen to me. So why would I do that to another woman? And that's what I'm trying to get y'all women to understand about you taking accountability Y'all, they're not married. They're not married to they see. I mean, if they ain't got a ring on it, they single. And then your ass get in a relationship and a nigga dog you out. And you like, well, why? <laughs> Bitch, look how you was acting. Again, take accountability. I'm, I'm done. Let me stop. This is getting, this is getting negative. <laughs> this is getting very negative and I don't want to go this way. Gratitude, love. God, how can we just start to... Um, stop trying to control men and just get ourselves in a place where we focus on ourselves and we're loving on ourselves and we're co-creating from a place of positivity because right, God, damn, y'all having kids to have a paycheck and nobody want to talk about it. Nobody talking about that shit because y'all bitches just want to get put on, but mm. 
Everybody talk. Everybody talking about how Nick Cannon is having kids with eleven different women, but ain't nobody talking about the eleven different women just fucking around having kids with Nick Cannon. Like, bitch, what you thinking? What what's on your mind that you having kids with somebody that just had three fucking fucking kids in one year? What the fuck is wrong with you? But y'all see these bitches and they look cute and they got cute, good clothes and they take good pictures on Instagram and you want to be them. No, that bitch is lost. Because why the fuck you, why Why do you think so lowly of yourself that you attach yourself with a man that's having kids with three or four different girls every month? Angel number 15, thank you, I'm done. Stop, stop, stop. <laughs> Get off me. No, no, because y'all not, no, no. Y'all trying to have all these people, uh, and watch this be the video that go off on the world and be on world star and all no, no, no fuck that whatever just do fucking better i'm over it <laughs> i'm over it this is the thing i don't give a fuck what y'all do it's i remember there's this there's this clip of Nicki minaj Nicki minaj like i don't give a fuck what she do i don't give a fuck what they do i don't i that's how i feel i don't give a fuck what y'all do y'all can believe these niggas ain't shit all you want but i'm gonna go ahead and get my prince charming have my fucking cinderella happy ever after ending and fly the fuck off in the sunset and leave y'all broke crying uh toxic asses down here because i don't give a fuck i'm not living that life no more you can have this toxic men, women, all who they need to change. Lena. No, fuck that. Y'all all fucked up. None of y'all got the fucking tools. Okay? <laughs> Gratitude, love. Shit, I'm getting hot. What's happening here? <laughs> Gratitude, love. I would not try to control the uncontrollable. Girl, get me out of here. One last message. Why are, you try Why are you going so hard about this message of gratitude and love? Why are you going so hard about people not controlling things? Like, what's happening here, God? Listening for the truth. Be the hunted. Be the hunter, not the hunted. Angel number 17 on one. It's the problem. Because y'all bitches want to get chose so badly. You're just a lot. Oh, my God, y'all. I don't know how many my hands are tingling right now i don't know how many true crime stories i have heard about women who were i mean you know own businesses you know damn near like the uh own law practices um women who had degrees and was living in a whole like living you know living a whole life in some dusty unemployed uneducated nigga that was not on her fucking level took her fucking life from her all because that woman didn't want to be alone somebody who was not on her level somebody who shouldn't even have been able to touch her fucking guard took her goddamn life and it was because she was so desperate because to have love we gotta do better this shit, I, I talk about it I get so passionate about it because it is literally life or death the person that you choose to lay with and have a life with is going to make or fucking break you. And I'm saying this shit and I mean this shit. I have seen women who have been with men who broke their ass down. Women who was beautiful. Women who had bodies and who, who had all these looks and then a fucking nigga came and fucking stressed them out. They ain't got no hair. Became fat as fuck. Because like, come mm -hmm. Do not let these men break you. I understand. Listen to me. I under <laughs> Listen to me. I understand that need and that want and that desire to want to have a man in your life. I get it, girl. Trust me. Okay? Trust me. But we cannot be in situations that are we know we know in our body in our bones in our dna that this person isn't good for us and we keep over and around it you should not be in any fucking situation with nobody where you have to betray yourself and you betray yourself when you get that gut feeling when you get that kick in the gut and you make a fucking excuse for why that's why that kick in the gut happened you fucking make an excuse for why you feel the way you feel. Oh, you tripping. Oh, it ain't that big of a deal. Oh, you being sensitive. How many times do you think them women probably had that exact same fucking feeling? Probably up until the night that they got fucking killed. Come on. Think highly of yourself. Value yourself enough to stand strong in your beliefs and your wants.
We getting picked off. Women are getting picked off. All because we so desperate. And you know, I honestly feel like and if I was a person who believed in the devil out here, I would feel like it's strategic. You know, it's always those women that are like just shining and glowing and some nigga come and try to like snuff off her fucking light. And that's what these niggas try to do. When a guy nitpick at you, when a guy make you feel insecure about yourself, he's sniffing your night light every fucking time. It's literally like I have this light on, right? And it's like every time he's like, oh, why you got that on? Why you do this? Why you do that? Why? Until you just like this and your fucking light is gone. This nigga beaming and you like feeling like shit inside. You're like, why do I feel this way? Because this nigga then took all your fucking light for himself. And the same thing can happen to women. Like we have to stop being so fucking desperate for companionship. It's natural to want companionship, but going about it desperately, going about it with accepting anything is dangerous. The person you are with can either make or break your life. Listen for the truth. Angel number 2121. 21. Woo, I feel like this message is for somebody. Oh my God, I just, it's all in my bones. You need to get away. Stop, just block them. I'm sorry, just block them. Like, it's not worth it. Is it worth your life? Is the dick worth your life? Is a pussy worth your life? Is that head worth your life? And, and we always think about it to where it's like, oh, um, you know, he can come and kill you. Or you can go and do some dumb shit out of anger trying to fucking retaliate against that nigga. It's neither way it ain't worth it, okay? Truth speaks to us constantly, but not always in words. It may be communicated through a feeling that is hard to put into words, but bring an unexplicable sense of peace, trust, and the knowledge that somehow everything is going to work out perfectly, even if there is little evidence of how it will all going to happen. You are being asked to listen for the truths beneath the words rather than the superficial message of the words themselves. This is especially true for the communication of those around you, the press, the newspapers, and the mass media. You will begin to hear fear in the words and actions of those around you, even as they preach love. Listen deeper. Listen for the truth. This oracle comes with a message of truth for you. You are hearing something that is not being said and what you are hearing is truthful. You may feel as though you are the only one that is really ready to hear or see it. Perhaps you have been working in a situation or in a loving in a relationship where the truth is constantly denied. We live in a world where truth is frequently avoided out of fear of what it may reveal. At the basis of such actions, consciously or not, is a deep sense of unhealed toxic shame. If you or someone else is fearful that the truth will expose rather than free and heal, then some personal healing is required. It is time for letting go of old wounds in favor of, in favor of a greater sense of self-love and acceptance. You are being asked to love yourself enough to honor the truth, even if you feel you are the only one doing so. Sacred rebels need truth like lungs need oxygen. Truth keeps the energy of life flowing through the rebellious heart. Lies dampen the spirit of the sacred rebel. Even if those with less awakened hearts fear the truth, you may not turn away from it. Don't resent this state of affairs. Perhaps your job is to show that the truth can be witnessed even when many may want to hide it. What others do is always their choice, but through your honorable deeds done with integrity, you will be set free no matter what the outcome. You are a truth seeker. Never deny or try to dampen down this side, this side to make others comfortable. You are meant to be an agitator at times, even though you don't have to confront people to do it. You don't necessarily have to say a word, though sometimes you will. Often you will agitate in the most loving sense by unveiling truth simply by through your know simply through your knowings. Hold compassion for the truths you behold. Do not use them as knives to cut another or yourself with harshness, but as the clear insight that allows one to loosen the knots that bind, simply by knowing which thread to tug gently. This oracle brings you guidance. If you have been worn down or depressed by lies, gossip, deceit, or backstabbing going on around you, don't fret. Get out in nature and spend some time communicating with the infinite. 
Healing will come to you now, no matter how many times and how many ways or by how many tongues untruth is spoken, you know what you know in your sacred rebellious heart. The truth is that your connection to the living truth of life itself, don't give up. Just open up to healing and know that the truth always eventually prevails. Angel number 25, 21. I just feel like I don't even want to, I don't want to clarify that. I just feel like what God is saying is that it's time for you to look at the world through new eyes. It's time for you to take accountability for yourself and to have, to take, a, to take accountability for yourself. And that even when you do open your eyes and you see the truth of the situation, don't deny it. Don't try to make an excuse for it, but accept it for what it is and have gratitude for the truth being revealed to you, okay? All right, y'all. <clears throat> I mean, I'm just going ahead, touching. I'm going to end this message with this. Put your hand on your heart. I'm actually going to leave this healing message down below because this feels very personal. I now release all vows of silence I have ever made, consciously or not. I now release all lies, deceits, and painful words spoken or unspoken that are affecting my ability to clearly know and speak my truth. I heal, I am, I am healed in unconditional love with protection and grace, so be it. Within me, beyond me, all rises and fails, only truth remains, I say. Angel number 2633. <clears throat> guys, as I was reading that message, I just want to say to you guys this one last thing. You know, the guy that I was going to, you know, have sex with or whatever that had a girlfriend and was living with her. He may have not valued his relationship, but I value myself in their, re in their situation enough to not do it, to not go there because of my integrity, because what I want to see in the world. And what I'm trying to get you to understand is just because it's cool, just because it's trendy, you're going to get lost in the crowd if you're doing shit based on what everybody else is doing. You got to do what is good for you. Okay. All right, y'all. Have a good one. I'm sorry that this may have been a hard message to hear, um, but it's necessary. And um, I just really want you to take care of yourself and to love on yourself and stop trying to control somebody and honestly if you have to like even go to those tactics of where you like well, i gotta do this to get him it ain't worth it just let it go all right y'all see you soon